I just realized I probably should have started videoing this while I was putting together what I put in my Instant Pot. I chopped up about a half of a large onion and about, oh, I don't know, uh, what was left of, it was about a half a head of cabbage, I guess, maybe a little less than a half a head. Um, most of the stock, uh, I'm, I'm going to say about a half, of, not stock, but the whole, the whole round thing of celery, a bunch of celery. What else did I put in there? Um, about a, almost a cup of leeks, not quite a cup. And I had little packets left over from ramen. I used that instead of instead of broth. Um, I, this glass filled up twice with water and a can of tomato sauce and then a bunch of spices. I put in a little bit of chili powder, some salt, some pepper, some ground parsley, some, what else did I put in there? A little bit of, uh, it was just an all-purpose, no salt um, seasoning, some and some. Um, oh, I always forget the name of it until I go to. I knew the name of it until I went to tell you. Turmeric, turmeric is what I put in there. Oh, this was the uh, organic, no no salt seasoning. Oh, and a little bit of paprika. So. I have a whole cupboard full of various spices, so whatever I want to fix, I'm pretty well set. There's a couple things I don't have that I'll pick up over time. Cats are out on the porch. They We keep them on leashes. They can go quite a ways. Their leash lets them go where, clear to the however long the leash is. There. Oh, no, you don't need it. You're fine. They see me talking right here. They love being out, though. Oh, it's taking a long time for the steam to all come out. I started to, um, I thought I was recording when I moved the little thing, and then I obviously, I forgot to start the video, but you got part of it when it was making a loud noise. So as soon as it quits making noise, I can open it up, and oh, there we go. Now I can open everything up. I'm not sure if I was even what I was. I have a hard time thinking and holding. Oh, that looks good. Oh. Let me put this over here. My messy kitchen. Okay. Oh, man. Doesn't that look good? steaming up the camera. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be really good to eat. Let me take a little. Well, let me take a little bite here. Oh, yeah. Mmm. I guess it's good. Mmm. Nummy. I brought my plants out this morning to enjoy the sunshine. There. I couldn't bring them out yesterday. It was just raining and cold. It's a little chilly this morning, too. But right here on the porch, it feels good. 
I didn't cover up my little things that I planted the other day, last night. I was wondering how they do, but golly, they look better today than they did when I planted them. They're just looking really good. So I thought I'd show you some other things that are just springing up here. Look at this parsley. Isn't that gorgeous? I planted that last, oh, late summer. And then this is coming up. This is, I believe it's um, rosemary. Yes, that's what I thought it was. I need to trim this top part off, but got nice green part coming up. My st strawberries are looking nicer every day. My Swiss chard overwintered nicely, as did some kale. And then And this kale is looking good too. That overwintered. And the garlic is coming up nicely too. Later today when it dries up from all the rain we had yesterday, I'm gonna get out here and plant some more of my cool weather crops and I think I'll just direct seed them and see what happens. Not the whole package, of course, so that if I need to replant, I've got that access. I'm excited about this. This is rhubarb a friend gave me, um, I think the year before last. And it came up the first year about like this, and then last year, just barely, and then it disappeared. And this is its third year, so I'm hoping that it does better. And then this is one that I purchased. And this year, growing inside, I've got some seeds that have sprouted. I'm going to be adding to my rhubarb collection. I've got more over here. This bunch of rhubarb probably could stand me to dig it up and, and split it out, or whatever you call it. Or divide it is the right word I was after. But this always gets real tall and does really well. Lots of daffies coming up. And tulips over there. There they are. There's more. These ones are going to bloom here before you know it. Look at that. Wow. Love it, love it, love it. A leaf sticking down in the middle of that bunch. <laughs> but that's going to be gorgeous. That's always gorgeous every year when that comes up. The rose looks pretty dead right at the moment, but it'll pop up in a month or so and start looking pretty. It's a nice pretty pink rose. Kind of a pinkish orangish color. There's just a little hint of, oh, that's not focusing very good, a little hint of a green spot right there on the peony, so I think that it's going to be okay. And I think I know what this is. It's a weed. I know that, but I think it's an edible one. From what I've gathered, I think I know what it is, but I'm not sure. So if you happen to know, let me know down in the comments. Okay. I think that's an iris coming up. I hope anyway that it is, because that's a yellow one that I planted. The hollyhock is starting to grow. And I, over here, Sorry about that going so fast. We have more daffodils and tulips ready to come up. Ooh, this one you can even see the yellow on the bloom. Cool. Coolness. That's going to be our first one out, I believe. Well, here's the part you've been waiting for. Mail call! 
my package came, my heat map. I'm going to go ahead and open it here with you watching me so that we can all see. I wonder if I can open that without these scissors. We'll see. Yeah, I think I can. Okay, how about that? Sometimes packages are hard to get to. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, look at this. It says, Seed Starter Heat Mat by Growerology. Heat mats warm the root area 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above grow room temperatures to improve germination success of seedlings and cuttings. Oh, I'm so excited. So let me go ahead and open this box so you can see what it's like. Okay, and there it is. And it is. You can tell that it's been rolled up here for a while. Oh, okay, there's two parts to it. Okay, so this is the electric part. And then this is the... I'll have to read the instructions to see just exactly what I do with it. Let's see. Place the heat mat on a dry surface with outstanding water. Plug it in and avoid cold surface and place heat mat on an insulated surface. Place a propagation tray or other, other plant container on the heat mat. Cover the tray with a humidity dome. Okay, so it doesn't tell me exactly what I do with this silver part. But I guess I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, I bet this goes around, around to, so that it um, makes it lighter. Maybe that's what it's for. I'll have to, I'll figure it out. I really will. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is my very first time that I have gotten anything from, no, no, I'll take that back. I was going to say it's the first time I've gotten anything from Homesteader or YouTube person, but it isn't because the other two things I had to send off for were some free seeds that I got from um, two different people on two, two different times when they said that all I had to do was send them a self-addressed stamped envelope and they would send me some seeds and they did. So this is actually my third thing that I've gotten from a YouTuber. This is very cool. Thank you so much. Oh, I was curious, you know, about, whoops, <laughs> not been knocking the camera over, about this. It says right on the box here what it's for. It says, bonus comes with an insulation piece that can be placed underneath the heat mat to improve heat mat efficiency. So now I know what it says. Insulation piece prevents heat loss downward and helps reflect heat upward. And I'm guessing after, you know, what I can, what, where my mind went was that after seeds have germinated, <clears throat> wherever they're sitting, they need as much light as they can get. And you could always surround the area with this too, if you're not using it under the heat mat. So again, thank you.